Hello everyone, I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. I'm here in Kensington, Calgary, Alberta, and today I'd like to go back to the basics. I'm going to be taking a look at some of the fundamentals of how to set up and understand your Bitcoin wallet. Um, I've had a lot of questions lately, people asking me, um, how do I send and receive from this particular wallet? And uh, how do I send and receive from this particular exchange? So what I want to cover in this video is is just some of the basics, some of the basic concepts so that you'll have a general understanding of how to use Bitcoin across multiple platforms and so that you can get a new wallet and understand how to use it and the basics of, of how it works before even opening it. So let's take a look at a few different wallets here. Okay, so I'm gonna cover three basic things in this video. Number one will be about basic wallet setup. Number two will be recognizing where to find your Bitcoin address. And number three will be all about how to send and receive Bitcoin through two different means. So let's take a look at our wallet setup. I'm gonna be looking at three different wallets here. Uh, we're gonna be looking at Copay, Mycelium, and Jax. All right, I've done videos on all three of these wallets separately, but uh, I think it's important to kind of see the differences and cross-reference them and just kind of see how the setup and use of these wallets is very similar, but with just a few minute differences. Now, one thing to note here is that uh, all of these Bitcoin wallets, they all access the same Bitcoin network. You can think of it like an internet browser. So you can get on the internet with Internet Explorer, with Safari, with Google Chrome, with Firefox. These are all just pieces of software that allow you to access the same thing. If you use a different computer with a different browser, you're still accessing the same internet. Um, and it's the same with all of these wallets. All of these wallets allow you to access Bitcoin, uh, but they're set up in different ways because people prefer um, different features with different wallets. So that's why there's a bunch of different wallets out there and it's up to you to choose which ones are best. Okay, so I'm gonna start here with Copay Wallet. I've done a video on this before, which I will link to here. Uh, so at the beginning, um, it just asks if I'd like push notifications. I would, so I hit allow. Um, there's a little uh, disclaimer at the beginning. I'm just gonna hit agree and get started. So uh, first, let's look for how to back up our wallet because that is the first step of any wallet. And if I hit receive, if I try to receive Bitcoin, it's gonna take me to my backup screen. And it gives me this list of 12 words. I'm gonna to need to write these down and then put them back in an order to tell the wallet that I have them safely written down somewhere. This is called your wallet seed. So when I do hit continue here, um, it's going to ask me to re-input these words. So I'll just uh, skip ahead here. I'm going to write these words down and then I'm going to come back with them put in. So uh, let's hit the button here. If you lose your phone and you have money in your wallet, you can get a new phone, re-download this app and input these words to recover your funds. Anybody that has access to these words has access to your funds. So you don't want to give these away to anyone. And now that I've written them down, I'm just going to tap in order what those words were. Once I'm done, I can hit finish and my wallet is backed up and good to go. I would keep that phrase somewhere safe. Now let's look at mycelium. It's much the same. I hit new wallet uh, and actually it, gives, it tells me to shake my phone. This just creates a random wallet based on my shaking and I hit backup wallet now. Uh, once I hit start, it's going to give me those 12 words for this wallet, uh, but one at a time. So same thing, I'll just speed up here. Uh, I write all of these words down on a piece of paper that I will keep safe afterwards. And once I'm done, I'm going to have to actually re-input them just kind of like the other wallet, a little bit different. This one, I actually have to write them in. So I went and I wrote them all in and then I hit next and that's it. My wallet is successfully backed up. Now, Jax is just a little bit different, but the same concept. Uh, it asks if I want to give it access to the camera, which I do. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm going to hit create new wallet. Uh, and here it just tells me that I should back up my wallet and tells me I need to go into the tools 
and I need to hit display backup phrase. All right, so this is just telling me to keep my phrase safe uh, when I write it down. So there's my phrase. I've written it down uh, off screen, and then I would just input it. Once I've input it, uh, that's it. Um, there's less prompts here, but it does say that I've successfully backed up my wallet. All right, so let's go in and let's see where is my address. So usually this is under a tab called receive. So when I hit receive, when I want to receive funds, it brings me to a QR code and a an alphanumeric string of digits down below it, okay? These are the same thing. These are both my wallet address. There's no difference other than the way that they're represented, but if you scan one with a phone, then it will copy the same address that is listed below it. Same thing in mycelium. If I hit receive, I get a QR code, and down below it I have an alphanumeric phrase, and same thing in Jax, you can see I have the phrase above and I have the QR code below, and they are the same thing. Okay, now if I want to send to somebody else's QR code, then uh, in Copay, I can hit this little button in the top corner and it opens my camera and I can scan a QR code and you can see it's copied that QR code into my phone. Same thing here, if I hit send in mycelium, there's a button that allows me to open my camera up top there and I just hit allow for the first time ever. But again, it scans and look at how quick it copied that address up top. And in Jax, there's a little camera button uh, in the middle there, and same thing. As soon as I open it, it recognizes the QR code and copies the address. Now, if I'm not with somebody and they were to text me their address, so here's a text message coming in right now that has a Bitcoin address. I can press down and hold on this address, and then I can hit the copy button, and I've now copied that person's Bitcoin address. And so if I'm not with them, uh, I can then just go to, say, Copay Wallet. And if I tap in the to field, it will automatically paste what I've copied. All right. If I do the same thing in Mycelium, it's similar. I just need to hold down on this one. And I would hit the paste button once it pops up. And again, I've pasted the address. And it is exactly the same in Jax. I'm going to hold down and then hit the paste button. And I've pasted in that address. And I would be able to send that person money. Now, if I want to send somebody my address, in Copay, I would just tap on the QR code and it automatically copies my address to be texted. I could go over to the text message then, hold down and hit paste and send it over to somebody. Or I could do that in Facebook Messenger or however I want to send it. Uh, let's take a look in Mycelium. If I want to receive funds, so I go to receive and here there's a little option to send up top it's in top right and you have all these options for apps you could send it in or you can just hit copy here so i'm going to hit copy and then i'll go back to my text message that i have going and once again i can hold down and paste that in and so now i've pasted uh, and sent my mycelium address and it's much the same here uh, you can tap a little button in Jax that copies your address and the same thing in a text message. You would just paste it in and send it along and that person could then send you money. Now, let's take a look at what happens. One little funny thing that happens in most wallets. If you receive money, if I go back into my QR code here and I look at my address, my address has changed. That is not a mistake. This is just a feature that wallets have implemented to give you more privacy so people can't see how much money you have. If somebody sends you money and they know your address, they can then see how much money has been sent to that address ever. All right. Um, so what most wallets do is they'll create a new address every time you receive money so that people can't keep track of how much money you have coming into your wallet. Um, and just so it's not public knowledge how much money you have, because that could technically make you a target for somebody to try and uh, steal your phone or whatever. 
Now, let's take a look at some exchanges here uh, just to see that the concepts are the same. I'm on Coinbase and I'm going to go to my accounts and I'm going to click on my Bitcoin wallet here. All right. So this is an online exchange, just if you weren't familiar. So when I go to my Bitcoin wallet, I have a list of transactions that I've done. Um, but up over here in the top, I have my wallet address. Now, if I click on it, it's much the same. There's a QR code and there is my lettered and numbered address down below it. If I were to select and highlight it and then copy it, I could then send that to somebody in a message, however I like, and that person could send me money. So I've got a, a wallet here open on my desktop. So if I were, this is copay for desktop, if I were to go and hit the send button, I could then paste in that address and I could send money to the person that had provided me the wallet address. Now uh, it's much the same if I want to request money, if I want somebody to, or sorry, if I want to send money to somebody else, uh, I could paste in their address. So let's say this person here on this wallet, uh, they were to copy the address below and they were to message me, say over Facebook or something, and I then had that address. So I'm just gonna copy here as if somebody had sent it to me. All right. And here, if I want to send funds to somebody, all I have to do is paste in their address, uh, assuming they're not with me. And then I would just put in how much I want to send and then hit send funds down below. All right. So same basic concepts here. We'll take a look at one other option. This is uh, Quadriga CX. This is a Canadian exchange. Um, but I just want to show you that it's it's basically the same. You just kind of have to be familiar with some concepts. Over here, I've got my Bitcoin wallet on the right. And I have two options, fund and withdraw. So receive money or send money. Okay, so if I want to receive money, I'm going to hit I want to fund my account. And you see the same thing. You see a QR code and above it, I can see there's my address. So I could scan the QR code or I could copy this address. I could go to, say, a wallet I have on my desktop and I could once again hit send and paste in my address. All right, and I would just send however much Bitcoin I want to do to fund my account. Now I could do the same thing. I can copy my address and if I go back to the main page of uh, Quadriga, I want to withdraw Bitcoin from this account. I hit the withdraw button and the address that I copied before, I can just paste it in here and that would show up in my desktop wallet that I have set up. I'd put the amount, I have a PIN number and I hit submit and my money is sent off to my own wallet. Now, in some instances, you'll be using a website and when you sign up for that website, they won't give you a seed for your Bitcoin wallet. And this is because that online service is holding your funds for you. So they are the equivalent of a bank. You are trusting that website, that institution, that company with your money. Okay, so that is why it's wise to not leave Bitcoin on an exchange or on a website uh, where they hold it for you uh, for very long because that company can be susceptible to hacking or perhaps employees that uh, are disgruntled and, and make away with money. Um, there are a lot of possibilities for you to lose your funds if you leave your money with other people. It is up to your, um, your judgment whether or not you trust a company enough to leave your money with them. Um, some would argue that some of the regulated exchanges are okay to leave your money on, uh, but I would still heavily advise against that for the most part, uh, unless you're doing a lot of trading back and forth and you need to keep your money on an exchange. All in all, I'd say it's not a good idea. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe, drop a tip if you're able to, and share this video. I'll see you guys next time on the BTC Sessions.